Hello, it's Joe, the CRM chap here, and I'm back with a brand new video series. Um, so previously we took a look at the MB400 and the PO400 exams. Uh, today, uh, in this first video in the new series, we're going to be taking a look at the PL600 exam. Now this is the exam for uh, those who are or who hope to be solution architects working with the Power Platform. So uh, in today's first video, we're going to be taking a look at two things that a Power Platform solution architect needs to be aware of. The first is our Dynamics 365 range of applications, and the second is AppSource. Now, um, when we're building out a Power Platform solution for the first time, typically we want to try and identify uh, anything that we can utilize or that's already existing as part of uh, the Power Platform uh, that's going to make our lives a little bit easier. And the great thing about the Dynamics 365 range of applications, or specifically the ones which um, typically fall under the category of custom engagement apps, is that these can be straightforwardly added onto our existing Power Platform environments. They use the same technology underneath the hood. So things like you know model-driven apps, Dataverse flows, business process flows, all of this is being used by these apps underneath the hood. So typically, if we've got a, a requirement that maybe aligns towards, let's say, you know, a Salesforce automation type requirement, maybe case management, uh, field service type things, then the Dynamics 365 applications will be ones that we need to take a look at. So in order to start working with these applications, um, we first of all need to go into the Power Platform Admin Center. So at the moment, we're in the make.powerapps.com portal. Um, we want to instead go into the admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com uh, URL instead. And we can see on here we've got a list of all our different environments. Now, if I've got an existing environment that uh, has been set up, you can see if I go and click into it, I go into resources at the top up here, I can see I've got an option for Dynamics 365 apps. And from here, I can see and potentially install a list of uh, available Dynamics 365 apps that are, that um, that my license current license will give me access to, um, to, so I can then install it into this specific Dataverse environment. Now, in this case, um, the list here is not as sort of full as we'd expect it to because I've not specifically enabled this particular environment for Dynamics 365 apps when it's been created for the first time. This is going to be sort of a mandatory requirement if you wanted to work with this for the first time. So let's just go back a step. Let's create a brand new environment. So I'm just going to call this PL600-D365 um, apps. I'm going to change my region to my default, which is United Kingdom over there. I want to make sure that I tick this box here to create a database for the environment. Then we can see down here we've got an option to enable Dynamics 365 apps. If I tick that option like so, I can see I then get this drop down that enables here. I can then select from the list of available um, applications that I can install. So in this case, I've got the customer service, field service, project service automation, sales enterprise options. In this case, I'm just going to say that maybe I um, wanted to build a internal CRM system for my sales team. So in this case, I'm going to click the sales enterprise option. I'm going to hit the save button. Uh, it's going to go off and start to create this environment behind the scenes. So we'll give it just a few minutes just to do that and then come back. So the environment's now ready. If I now click into it like so, I should be able to see if I go into my resources and Dynamics 365 apps area up here. Uh, we should see that the Dynamics 365 uh, Sales Enterprise Edition app has been installed. If I click on Install App on here, I should see that I've now got some additional options as well. So if I wanted to, let's say, install the Field Service app on top, I can just click on the next button, agree to the terms of service, and then it will start to install this seamlessly behind the scenes. Uh, and if I was to, let's say, go into this environment now, uh, click on the link like so, I should see that on the Welcome screen, I'll get the uh, Sales Enterprise app installed and ready to sort of select from the list. So just give that a moment just to load. Okay, and we can see on the list here that I've got the sales of application, which is basically there and ready to go. Um, so it's very easy and quick to install these apps into our environment. As I say, we just need to make sure that when we're creating them for the first time, we enable the environment for our Dynamics 365 apps. And we also need to make sure that we've got the appropriate license type as well set up on our M365 portal. Okay. So Dynamics 365 applications will be one of the areas that we want to go to um, as much as possible for trying to find sort of off-the-shelf functionality that we can very quickly deploy out. A second option that we've got available to us is, is something called AppSource. And this is more for situations where we want to maybe install solutions that maybe not from Microsoft, but maybe from ISVs or third-party companies uh, that may have a particular solution that we want to sort of work with. So in order to access AppSource, I need to go into the Maker portal. I can see I'm in my PL600 environment at the top. If I click on Solutions down here, we can see I've then got an option there for Open App Source. If I click that open, it's going to then take me through into the uh, the App Source area for the Power Platform. 
and from here I can see all of the sort of pre-built solutions that are ready to go and which can be sort of installed. Um, so the great thing about AppSource is that most if not all of the solutions on here will typically have a free trial of some description. So you can see down here we've got an, a solution here from um, a company called Inogic on here. We can see it's a free trial so I can install this into my environment, maybe experiment around with it, make sure that it's a good fit for me before I then um, you know, decide to purchase it. I can also see as well that Microsoft have flagged this as a preferred solution, so it's going to be something that hopefully give, gives me a bit more assurance that if I go for it for the first time, that it's obviously going to be a good fit. It's been validated by Microsoft and is, a, and is going to be um, you know, a useful solution to consider. So typically, if we can't satisfy um, our requirement from via a Dynamics 365 application, the, the general next best place to go is AppSource and just to see what we've got on there. It could be that you find an existing solution on there that's going to meet your particular needs and it's going to save you from having to go through um, you know, bespoke development cycle as part of your project. As solution architects, we should be really aware um, and trying to sort of mitigate against you know, large pieces of bespoke development work targeting the Power Platform, particularly if it's going to involve custom code as well. We want to be using what's available out of the box as much as possible. We don't want to be tying ourselves too deeply into custom solutions is going to cause us lots of issues potentially when it comes to upgrade and maintain it in the long term. Better instead to um, instead maybe pay for something either from Microsoft directly or from a third party uh, solution provider instead. So hopefully this has given you a bit of a flavour of um, how to work with Dynamics 365 applications and also AppSource as well and these are topics that for the exam that you need to have a bit of good awareness of and obviously be able to sort of um, explain and, uh, and articulate um, the uses cases for both of those. Um, so spending some time um, to familiarize yourself with the, the different Dynamics 365 apps are available, that are available and the benefits using app source will hold you in good stead when you sit in the exam. So that wraps it up for today's video. Um, so I hope you found this useful. Um, please do like and subscribe. There's going to be further videos in this series covering other topics that come up in the PL600 exam. It's really great to have you along for the ride. Uh, but all we safe, safe now is have a great day. Cheers. Bye.